What are you doing here? Oh, <laughs> it's that time of day. My bad. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it's Tuesday, May 26th. Now, besides being silly, what I like to do is share a hot penny stock with you. I trade penny stocks all through the day. These are stocks under five bucks and they're on every single market. And I'm constantly looking for stocks that have potential to make us money. <laughs> well, I found one today that I definitely have to share with you. This is ticker NILA Nilum Resources. Now, she may have already had her day. It's very possible. It has been a wild day for Nilam. She had news come out yesterday that had some real big numbers in it. Whenever you have a news press that starts throwing around a billion dollars, that's going to catch attention. If you have a news press talking about thousands of Bitcoin, that's going to catch attention. <laughs> But when you get both of them in the same news press with the same deal, oh my God, this is what you end up with. I posted the news pre-market and I saw her running. She was hot early. Now, I don't know how she was running, but I know around 10, 11, somewhere around there, she was at 400% gains. And it was at that point I decided I was going to share this with you. I hear you. You're saying, John, why would you share a stock with us that is literally a rocket stock? 400% by 10 in the morning? Are you kidding? Well, to be honest, I think the news is hot enough that she's going to go for <laughs> And she did. Oh my God. Look, folks, she finished the day at 29 cents. She started the day at 1.7 cents right? We finished a day. I think she's still climbing. We finished a day at 1,658% gains. All right. Do I think she's still going to climb? I don't know. There is a lot of potential here. There's a lot of excitement around these big numbers. What I do think is that rocket stocks crash. And if they don't come all the way back down to earth, they find themselves a strong support a strong SMA, and they bounce off of that and take back a lot of those gains. I think that's what we're looking at here. She is on the pink tier. She's current. She's got all that validated information I'm telling you to look for. Verified profile and transfer agent verified. With pinks being the bottom tier of the OTC, they are the riskiest because there is no validated information down here. These green ticks are the only validated information you get with most pinks. So this is looking pretty decent, except for that warning right there, shell risk. This is bad news. It tells us they're in business. They're doing something, but they're not making any money. That's not real good, but it really isn't the truth. This hasn't been updated yet, as you're going to see. So what is Nilam Resources about? Well, look, I could read a whole lot here and I'm going to read a little, but basically they're a holdings company. They have no business of their own. They don't generate any revenues of their own. What they do is invest their money into other companies, whether they be micro companies or companies that just need a little bit of help getting exposure and out there and they make money off of them. They become their subsidiaries. They tell us here that Neelam Resources is a visionary investment holdings company. Nila has transitioned from its origins in health and wellness investments to embrace the dynamic fields of frontier technologies and applications. Nilla's main goal is to generate returns on its investments by acquiring, holding, and sometimes actively managing a portfolio of businesses in various verticals, including fintech, medtech, and climate tech, and more. Now, they do give us a heads up down here that I want to pass on to you. Please note that the Twitter account, Nilla Holdings, is not authorized by the company. That's not their Twitter account, so don't be trusting it. They tell you if you want information about the company, come here for it. That's what OTCIQ means, right here. So, I could go over to their website. They've got Nilla Holdings here, but it is the most generic website you've seen. Basically, what you see written here is written over there, just spread out. And there's not a whole lot of extra information over here in their most current financial, which is real important. Now, we're going to take a look at the numbers from the financial point, but right now, I just want to point out a couple of things to you here. First off, they are not a shell company. 
They are in business. They've got the box ticked here. No, that they're not a shell company. They say, have you changed from a shell status in the last quarter? No, which means that they've been in business for at least the last two quarters. And it doesn't look like that when you look at their financials, but two quarters ago, they were making money, but they couldn't report it until this quarter right here. Here's the big point, change of control. There was a change of control with the deal that they made. November of 2023, they acquired 100% of Techie Trade. They gave Techie Trade three quarter billion shares. Now this is how it works. Techie Trade is in charge of the business. They're in control, but they're a subsidiary of NILA. So NILA is in control of Techie Trade, but Techie Trade is in charge of the ticker in the business right now. So let's bounce on over here to the OTC market and get our relative volume for NILA. What the heck is that? Look what happened, folks, while we were looking at the financials. The company just got changed to Caveat Emptar. Scalling crossbones, buyer beware. OTC Markets Group has determined that there is a public interest concern associated with this company. What the heck happened? Obviously, I have no answers for you because I've been with you looking at the financials, but this just occurred. Now, I can tell you this, caveat emptar is the absolute worst status that you can have on the OTC market. Far worse than the expert market. The expert market is nothing but a penalty box. It's reserved for companies that are late on their financials. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Once they get those financials caught up though, they're back on the market. No problem. It's not that easy with caveat emptar. But it's really not that easy because we don't know what's going on. They will give us no information at any point. We will get no news presses, no filings, not telling us why they got it no updates while they're in it, and no information when they're coming out of it. It'll just happen when it happens. Sometimes it happens in a day, sometimes it happens in a year. You can never tell. Now, of course, I would not have shared a Caveat Emptar stock with you had it been Caveat Emptar before we started, but we're in the midst of the game now. So I'm gonna continue on with this, even though this isn't tradable, one, I do believe there's going to be a lot of people who have questions about why this stock was running today. This video will come in handy for that. And two, when they bring up caveat emptar, what normally happens is all of this information, share structure, news, finances, all disappears. They block it all out so you can't know nothing about the company. So if that happens tomorrow, my video will still have this information that we can look back onto. So as I was saying before I was rudely interrupted by a skeleton face over there, her volume exploded today. Her regular average is about 21,000 shares a day for the last 30 days. Today, she did over 17 million shares. That is over 800 times her normal volume, which is equivalent to over 80,000%. Folks, that is an incredible jump in volume. Taking a look at her share structure, Oh, we got a lot of shares here. Or do we? Look, our outstanding share count is 1,057,000,000. The insiders own over a billion of those shares. 1,007,000,000. Which leaves us only 49.5 million shares out of over a billion. Which is great. We love that. Now, I'm going to put something out there. Just food for thought. Not making any acquisitions. I'm not accusing anybody of anything, though something may be happening considering the skull and crossbones. When you see a company where the insiders own a lot of the outstanding share count, and when you see a pink put out a news press that is just too good to believe. Now, you haven't seen this news press, but you're going to. It's juicy. It is almost too good to believe you could be setting things up for a pump and dump. They put out a fake news press, the stock runs, the insiders sell, they make all their money and the stock comes plummeting down and we're left holding a bag. Now that's not legal, but it's easy to get away with. And I don't know if this skull and crossbones came up to block that. I'm just saying, I'm just thinking out loud, anything is possible. 
Market cap for Nilla, it's about $17.5 million. Financials for the company. Now, they told us she was a shell risk, meaning that she's in business, but she's not making any money. Well, we don't see anything here on the annuals. But they did tell us that for at least the last two quarters, they have not been a shell company, meaning they have been in business. Well, there was no revenues reported two quarters ago. Well, that's when they were making the money. This is when they reported it. And the money they're making now, they'll report in the next quarterly report. So we have our first money on the books right now. This needs to go away. It just hasn't been updated. $377,000. Not 377. We got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. And they got to take home good, strong profits of that. Cost them 71,000. They got to take home 306,000 of that 377. And this is the first money on the books. The car is starting to move. The trip has begun. Get excited. Taking a look at the balance sheet for the company. We do have some money in the bank, not a whole lot, $29,000. Thank God for them three zeros. Total assets, we've got about $14 million. Total liabilities, whoa, a lot lower than I was expecting, $1.2 million, which means this company only having $337,000 worth of revenue on the books has got over $12 million in stockholder equity for us. Ha ha! Let's take a look at those disclosures now. Now, I'm not anticipating any disclosures about that skull and crossbones because they don't give them, and we don't have one. As a matter of fact, we don't have anything here since 2019. All of their financials are caught up, and we did poke our head into this one. Nothing extra I could show you in there. So let's jump on over to the news. Now, we don't have a lot of news here. This piece of news, when they were back in the health industry, is from 2021. The next piece of news comes from November 2023, which is about that acquisition of Tech Trade, which we saw in the financial. They got a hold of that company in November. It is now in charge of the ticker. It's their business, but it is the subsidiary of NILA. Then the news that came out yesterday. Nilam Resources enters letters of intent to acquire 24,800 Bitcoin. Nilam Resources announced that it has entered into a letter of intent with Cyber Data to acquire 100% of their company to be established under the name MindWave. The company holds 24,800 Bitcoin. Nilam Resources will issue newly authorized preferred Series C stock in exchange for the 24,800 Bitcoins at a discounted rate relative to current market prices. Now, right now it's just about $70,000. And just to make the math easy, if you multiply 24,800 by 70,000, you're roughly $1.7 million, roughly. Neelam Resources Inc. will acquire 100% of MindWave, which will hold digital assets, including 24,800 Bitcoins, as well as other assets. These assets will serve as collateral to raise capital for investment in high yield generating projects. So there's your primary purpose for all of this. Yes, it's worth a lot of money, but they don't want to sell them. They want to use it as collateral so that they can leverage that money to make more money, which is a great business strategy. The acquisition marks a significant strategic milestone for the company. You ready for this? and represents over a billion dollars in digital assets. Well, where do they show up? I saw 12 million in stockholder equity and I was going through their financials, so I'm not too sure where that came from, but they just declared that they now, with this new deal, have a billion dollars worth of digital assets. The company and team have been working diligently over the last several months to finalize all the agreements and due diligence necessary to proceed to a legally binding letter of intent. Hasn't been signed yet, which means they don't have to follow through with this. They could come back next week and say, nah, we're not going to go through with that deal. And boom, the stock comes falling down. This transaction brings Nielsen's assets with a value exceeding $1 billion. They said it twice here. 
So what is cyber data about? Cyber data, formerly known as 101 Systems, is headquartered in Marathas and is a leading player in global connectivity services. Since 2011, cyber data has been instrumental in keeping the world connected with a network spanning Africa, Asia, Europe, North America, Oceania, and South America. Now, I know I've only been on this planet for about 60 years, but I thought I knew all the continents. Where the heck is Oceania? I know all these other continents, but I never heard of Oceania. So that's what they do. You know, and I'm not real sure if this is 5G, 4G, exactly how they're keeping it connected, fiber optic, satellites, some more due diligence would be necessary. But you see the catalyst here, folks. They have just, they are getting access to 24,800 Bitcoin, and they say they are worth over a billion dollars which would make the company severely undervalued right now, which is why she is running like a wild man on fire. Let's go take a look at this hot chart. Oh my God. This thing hit a high of 37 and a half cents today when it started off at 1.7 cents. Bloody heck. So we're taking a look at ticker NILA. This is Nilam Resources, and we're going to chart it on my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. Got it opened up to a one-day, one-year chart, and I'm going to stretch this so you can see it the way I see it. What we've got here is a downtrend, but we also have an atypical breakout chart, a beautiful one that's already broke out. Our 200-day SMA is falling and our price is pushing up towards it. They're getting closer and closer. And the closer they get, the more excitement you see in the price, trying to get up over this 200. Then she took a dip here, kind of like a crouch, you know, like a cat does before it jumps. It always goes down before it jumps up. Well, this came down and boy, did it go up. Way the heck up there. Can't even see the top here. And look at that volume bar, folks. It dwarfs everything before it. And our oscillators are ripping right now. Every single one of them is pushing to the moon and hard. And look at our MACD. That is the biggest green bar I have seen on a MACD. Come on down to our six-month, four-hour view. All right, let me see if I can stretch this. You can see where our high is, but when I stretch this open, we kind of lose our high. So there she is bouncing uphill, right? She's on her 50-day SMA, climbing took that dip and then took that serious rip. Not much more to say except all of our osculators are still ripping to the moon hard. Our RSI, oh my God, is up there at 90. RSI is at 90. Coming down to our 20 day, one hour view. Really just flat as a pancake here until today. She ripped from that uh, 1.7 cents and just floated on that nine day SMA and even started pulling away from it, getting more strength, climbing even faster. Our oscillators are still hot. Every single one of them pointing to the moon and our RSI is still blazing hot down here at 82. Now, I know there's a lot of you people out there that say, well, if it's in the overbought and red, that's dangerous. That means it's got to come back down. Yes, sooner or later, but it could be up there all day like this one was. Come on, it went up yesterday and it stayed up there all day. So if you were running away from a hot RSI, you'd have missed a lot of money today. Coming on down to that five day, five minute. Boy, that's beautiful. So she took off early here. We were at that, uh, actually we were about a penny and a half here. Pre-market, she went up to about 300% gains pre-market. She went up to five cents from a penny and a half. And as soon as she got on the market, look at that burst of volume, folks. She's ignited. She got up on top of her nine. When she finally fell back, she fell to her 20 perfectly. Bounced off of that, back onto that nine-day SMA, ripped super hard, came back down to her 20-day. She bounced off of that, and now she's sitting on top of it. It doesn't look bad. If she was not a caveat emptor, skull and crossbones, I'd say this looks ready to run tomorrow. But you can't trade a caveat emptor. Until they pull that skull and crossbones off, 
there will not be even background buying and selling of this stock. When stocks are on the expert market, brokers, marketers, they can actually buy and sell the stock, even though you and I can't. Not so with caveat emptor. Nobody is allowed to buy these. And we're not going to know anything. I wish I could tell you something. I wasn't expecting this to happen in the middle of the video, but it has. But I can tell you this. When a expert or a caveat emptor falls off, there is normally a surge of excitement as soon as it happens. We were watching Herb today, ticker ERBB. It fell off of the expert market. It was up at 0006 when it went to the expert market. It got bought and sold by brokers and marketers who pulled that price down to 0001. That's what they do. Well, it came back on the marks to take off the expert market. I saw it at uh, 0015. And I told everybody on Twitter, I would not be surprised to see this thing go right back to 0006 where it originally was at before it went to the expert market. What did it do today? Went right back to 0006. That was over 300% gains if you got in early. So I invite you to do some more due diligence, although I don't know if you'll find any information about the caveat emptor. Maybe if you go off the OTC site out there to Google, you might find something. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.